What's up, everybody? Welcome to the first live stream of basically an in-game performance of the Texas Rangers. Today, the Rangers are facing the Los Angeles Angels. Yesterday, we got the win. Um, that's always good to see. Today, Taylor Hearn is on the mound versus Reed Detmers. Um, I'm not too convinced with Taylor Hearn as a starter um, but the Rangers do crush left-handed pitching, so I think it's a good matchup today for the Texas Rangers. Brad Miller's out of the lineup. Same with Nate Lowe, and they did the platooning of Charlie Culbertson and Nick Solak. But the Angels are a good team, so yes, we did beat them yesterday, but it's going to be a tough series. Um Hopefully, Taylor Hearn can repeat what he did on his last start, but we will see. First pitch is in a, probably a minute or two. But yeah, left field, Eli White. Center field, Dolores Garcia. Right field, Cole Calhoun. And then third base, Charlie Culberson. Corey Seager at short, Marcus Simeon at second, Andy Abanez at first, no Nate Lowe. And then Sam Huff will be catching. So, Jonah Heim does get the day off, which is kind of interesting. He's not even in as a DH because we're going against Reed Detmers, a left-handed pitcher, and he crushes lefties. So, that's why I think it's a little interesting. Let me know. Let me know what you guys think. I think it's interesting now that they've started to platoon Nate Lowe a little bit. Foul ball to Taylor Ward. Taylor Ward has actually been one of the best players in the MLB so far, which is kind of surprising because he's not a big-name player at all. One to the count, Taylor Ward, fly ball to Dolores Garcia, easy out. Mike Trout up to bat, Taylor Hearn only four pitches so far. Mike Trout is off to one of another hot season just because he's the best player in baseball. And a lefty righty matchup obviously isn't super favorable for Taylor Hearn, but we'll see. Ball one to Mike Trout on what looked like a curve or some sort of slider. Seven game advantage of the second place team. Hard 
Count is now two and two to Mike Trout. If Taylor Hearn can get a good first inning, I think that'd be crucial for the Rangers because the Rangers do like to hit at home for some reason. And Mike Trout hits it hard straight to Cole Calhoun over his head. That'll probably be a double. That was smoked. And Cole Calhoun, a gold glove right fielder, doesn't read it well. Obviously, that looks like a blast off the bat. Jumps, misses it, and Mike Trout gets an easy double. Putting pressure on Taylor Hearn. And the, range, the Angels do have a really good lineup because Taylor Ward has come out of nowhere. Obviously, they have Mike Trout. They have Anthony Rendon, who's kind of been underperforming for his contract. And now they have Shohei Otani up to bat. But that ball had to at least been hit 110 miles an hour. Showed hey, Otani's off to a pretty good year so far. Nothing like his MVP season from last year, but still a tough team in the Angels. Fastball at the bottom of the zone. Otani hits it straight to Eli White for the second out. That could have been trouble because it was hit really hard, but 106 miles an hour by Shohei Otani. Apparently, Mike Trout's was also 106 miles per hour. Even though... The Rangers dig in out. That's two 106 balls off the, the bat from or that Taylor Hearn has let up to us. Not the best thing to see. Here comes Anthony Rendon to the plate. Hit pretty hard by Rendon, but another foul ball. Like I said, Taylor Hearn has been decent so far this season, but I think at best he's a fifth starter in the rotation at best. I mean, this year we had to ask a bunch of him because obviously – our rotation is a little lackluster, but Martin Perez has been pitching well. I think John Gray will pitch better. Dane Dunning's been probably all right to be a third, 
guy in the rotation or a fourth guy in the rotation, but Taylor Hearn hasn't been too impressive to me. I feel like he would be better suited going back to the bullpen. Um, But the thing is, Glenn Otto hasn't been spectacular at all. He had those good games to start this year for him. Um, But Glenn Otto could get called down. You never know. But I think Colwyn is definitely going to be the next guy up because I don't think A.J. Lexi's pitching well in the minors. Spencer Howard isn't pitching well. I don't think you'd create a 40-man spot for Koei Arihara. That's why I think Taylor Hearn, he's not the best, but I think he works in our rotation. Um, I don't really know. Is he a fly ball pitcher? Is he a ground ball pitcher? Because if he's a fly ball pitcher, that does make sense for the Texas Rangers with the big home field. And Rendon walks, or Hearn walks Rendon. So there's pressure on the base paths. Mike Trout at second off of his double. Anthony Rendon on first base because of the walk. Um, who is next? Matt Duffy, um, a platoon guy now in his career, but still crushes um, left-handed pitching. Hopefully Taylor Hearn can wrap up this inning. But even if it's a short outing for Hearn, I still think that um, we could still win the game because our bullpen has been pretty good. From Dak Prescott, Hearn doesn't get the call. Yeah, that was a close one. On that was a pretty close call. Shattered bat by Matt Duffy to Corey Seager for two Andy Abanias for the third out. Broken bat. So nice pitch by Taylor Hearn to get out of the inning. Um, this turns over the lineup to Eli White leading off. Then Marcus Simeon and then Corey Seager. I, I like Eli White out of the leadoff spot. He's been hitting well this year. And he specifically hits well against left-handed pitching. He's fast, so... That makes sense. Hopefully, Marcus Simeon can get going. And Corey Seager still rakes against left-handed pitching. So, let's see what we can do in the bottom of the first. Batting order for the Texas Rangers, Eli White leading off, Marcus Simeon batting second, playing second, Corey Seager batting third, playing shortstop, Adolis Garcia batting fourth, playing center field, Nick Solak batting fifth, DHing, Cole Calhoun batting sixth, playing right field, Cole Calhoun has actually been playing better, um, Andy Abanez playing first base, batting seventh, that's notable because Nate Lowe isn't in the lineup. Sam Huff playing catcher, batting eighth, and Charlie Culberson batting ninth, playing third. All those guys are kind of in there for platoon reasons, but 
Here we go. Reed Detmers did no hit with the last team he played. But the Rangers are pretty good against left-handed pitching, so hopefully we can get something going versus Detmers. From Samuel Patton, Huff is going to hit a bomb tonight. I mean, hopefully. I do. I'm rooting for Huff tremendously. But, I mean, I don't know if he's going to pan out, to be honest. But this is good, valuable experience for Sam Huff at the Major League level with Mitch Garver on the IL. Um, but I want, that, make, that could make sense. Left-handed pitching could be favorable for him. And did Eli White swing? Yes, he did. That, that was not a swing. That was not a swing. That was a terrible call. But Reed Detmers with his first strikeout. Remember, he was he was drafted not too long ago out of Louisville, I believe. Had a quick transition through the minor leagues. Already in the major leagues. Um, oh, maybe that was a swing. Yeah, that actually was a swing. So good call by the umps, but... Live, it did not look like it. Now, here comes Marcus Simeon, um, a guy we gave $175 million to and hasn't shown no return on investment, hasn't shown glimpses of, oh, wow, he could, I could see him turning it around. He's actually been really bad for the Rangers um, and almost everything. He hasn't even played that good of defense, in my opinion. He's already down 0-2 to Reed Detmers. Um, you just got to think that eventually he can turn it around. Uh, he takes a ball, a curveball by Detmers. One ball, two strikes to Marcus Simeon. But you think a guy that's finished in the MVP race two years, not two years in a row, but he was top three twice, he has to turn around. Like, he can't be this bad for so long. Maybe it's Marcus Simeon that gets his first home run tonight, and then he gets on a roll. It's two, and two is the count. Here comes the next pitch. Oh, nice hit ball by Simeon, but a fly out to Brandon Marsh. He got a little jammed on that one. I really, I really hope he starts turning it around. So apparently the no-hitter was versus the Tampa Bay Rays, it looks like. But I think the Rangers should still score some runs tonight. It's not like it's not like Reed Demers is um, like Max Scherzer or, any, or anything. But here comes our best player on the team. Corey Seager takes a curveball. Four ball one. The problem with the Rangers is that they haven't been scoring a lot of first inning runs, and then they kind of just get in a slump throughout the entire game. But if they score first or or they score early, then usually they're set up pretty good to win the entire game. But that hasn't always been the case. Um, but Corey Seager. It's a good man to have to play. Two balls, no strikes. Hits a fly ball deep to left field. That ball is gone. Let's go. Corey Seager with a solo home run. And just like I was talking about, that we need to score early. Corey Seager, our best hitter on the team, puts us on the board with a solo home run. His eighth home run of the year. That went 388, 102 uh, feet with a 30 launch angle. Corey Seager is the dude for us. We just need Marcus Simeon to start clicking and then Mitch Garver to play well when he is healthy. Let's go. That's oppo taco power. And Marcus, no, Corey Seager has actually hit lefties a lot better this season than he's hit 
right-handed pitching. And then Adoles Garcia on the first pitch he sees drives it to deep left center, gets to the gap. He gets an easy double for the Texas Rangers. If we're able to get another run this inning, that'd be awesome. Because just like I was saying, the first inning has been lackluster for the Rangers. But Corey Seager with a home run. Adoles Garcia with a nice double. If he scored that up a little bit more, that probably could have been a home run. But that's that's nice. But that's good persistence by the Rangers with the first out by Eli White and another quick out by Marcus Simeon. They didn't get discouraged. They just stuck with their game plan. The fifth double for Marcus, I mean, Adolis Garcia on the season. It's actually interesting. Adolis Garcia actually, um, he actually hits right-handed pitching better um, than left-handed pitching. That's been a trend throughout his entire career. But here comes another um, lefty crusher, and that's Nick Solak, the guy we acquired in the Peter Fairbanks deal. We thought that he could be a big league second baseman for us, but at, now it kind of just looks like he'll be a platoon option. Um, we'll probably never face right-handed pitching, um, but right now he's going against Detmers because Nick Solak crushes lefties. Um, but, but let's just see. And then you got up next is Cole Calhoun, the guy who's been hitting extremely well the past week. Nick Solak takes uh, a ball outside. The count is now one and one. Solak takes a high fastball, chops it foul. I think if we get another run this inning, that would be crucial for the Texas Rangers. Nick Solak hits another foul ball, staying alive. Come on, so like, let's get a hit. Takes another ball outside. Reed Detmers doesn't look like he has his best stuff so far. There's been some pitches that have just been way outside the strike zone. Changing my angle real quick. Come on, Solak. Ooh. Demers blows it right past him for the final out of the inning. Strikes out Solak. But we scored one run on the Corey Seager home run. That's going to be crucial. Hopefully Taylor Hearn can navigate his way through the Angels lineup. But, I mean, that's why we signed Corey Seager to be the guy that gets the big hits. Like I said, we still need to get Mark Simeon rolling because we signed him to be that guy also. And then also Mitch Garver because he's been a silver slugger in the past. It just hasn't all clicked this season. And the Rangers have actually been one of the most unlucky teams in the league this year when it comes to batted ball data. But Jonah Heim has been playing exceptionally well. And honestly... If he kept this up, he could be in the conversation for an MVP. Um, I feel like if Jonah Heim were playing tonight, he would probably have a really good showing because he crushes left-handed uh, pitching. He crushed it last year, um, and he's still doing that right now. He has a WOBA of like 600 and a weighted runs create plus of 320, which is insane. League average is 100. So it just goes to show that even though we've had guys that haven't been performing well, like Garver or Simeon, we've still had 
other guys to pick up the slack, most notably um, Jonah Heim, but also Eli White. He's actually played sneaky well. He did strike out, um, but make sure you just keep on watching him because he plays a solid defense. He runs the base as well, has the fastest speed in the league, and he's actually been hitting it well too this year um, with that new uh, swing the Rangers worked with in the offseason. But it's kind of been an interesting season because I feel like our pitching has actually um, – here's my dog. Uh, I feel like our pitching has actually – been exceptionally well and then the hitting which we thought was going to carry the team hasn't really been there this season um but i think it's all been because of martin perez and dane dunning um martin perez is pitching like the ace of the lineup which is crazy to say um here we go taylor hearn versus um renjifo goes in for strike one and we get a nice chopper to Andy Abanez. Runs it down, easy out at first base. So let's go. That's an easy out. Um, next up is Welsh, the catcher. That's what it looks like. Obviously, Andy Abanez is still trying to learn the first base position. Um, a little choppy by um, Banyas, but he got the out. That's all we really care about. First pitch to Wallach, the catcher. Fly ball deep right center field. Adilis tracks it down for the second out of the inning. And just a reminder, I'm only going to be doing the first three innings of the Rangers game, but I'm going to try to start doing this more often where – live stream the first three innings of the game um but so far it's been a pretty quick start to the game we already have two outs in the top of the second now brandon marsh the former top prospect is batting for the angels he's kind of been an underperformer just like joe adele um we thought that the Angels were going to have a super stacked outfield with Mike Trout, Brandon Marsh, Joe Adele. But Adele's in AAA now. Brandon Marsh, actually, he's actually had a decent season. But it's early. And that's why I still have to remind myself with guys like Marcus Simeon and Mitch Garver. There's always room to turn it around. Mitch, uh, Brandon Marsh fouls the ball off for strike two. The thing with Taylor Hearn is that his fastball velocity has been down this year, um, which is notable. I wonder if it's because he's trying to get stretched out as a starter and he's getting fatigued, or if it's because um, he has an elbow injury or shoulder soreness. But you almost wondered if you move him to the bullpen, would he produce better results? But honestly, right now, the Rangers don't have the immediate depth because I don't think you'd put Spencer Howard back in the majors or Colby Allard or Kohi. You're going to wait on Cole Wynn. Brandon Marsh gets a single in his first at bat. Now Andrew Velasquez up to bat. Andrew Velasquez is not known for his hitting, known for his defense, but he has picked up a few hits versus the Rangers in the past. 
Taylor Hearn throws it, and the foul ball for Velasquez. I think it's – I think with Hearn, we know he's not going to be an ace. We know he's not going to be a two, not even a three. But if he could just be a solid four or fifth starter in the rotation, that's good with me. But I think next year we'll have more depth in the rotation – with hopefully a free agent signing. Maybe it's Joe Musgrove. Maybe it's Noah Syndergaard, who we kicked out early at the game last uh, night. But I also think Colwyn and Jack Leiter will probably be in the rotation. So that's three new guys to add to the mix. And then obviously Martin Perez will be a free agent. John Gray will be in the rotation next year, probably Dane Dunning. So that will probably push all the fringe guys out. And then if you needed some depth, you have guys like AJ Alexi and Glenn Otto. As of right now, obviously trades could always happen. You never know. Taylor Hearn, 95 miles an hour, blows it right past Velasquez. Strike two. All right, Hearn, let's get let's get a punch out right now. Number nine hole hitter. Doesn't hit well. You're known for your velocity. I would say throw a fastball right now. Get an easy strikeout, get out of the inning. Hopefully, we can pick up more runs next inning for the Rangers. The 0-2 pitch by Hearn. Strike three, and Sam Huff throws down to second from a stealing Brendan Marsh, but it doesn't matter because we're out of the inning. Taylor Hearn gets Velasquez looking we're going to the bottom of the second. Rangers winning 1-0. to zero. We're going to have Cole Calhoun batting, Andy Ibanez, and Sam Huff. Um, Samuel Patton said hopefully Huff hits a bomb tonight. We will see. It poten- potentially could happen. Um, I think he does hit lefties better. I haven't done the research on him. I know Cole Calhoun isn't that good against left-handed pitching, but he's been playing better, getting hitting the ball hard. And Andy Abanez crushed left-handed pitching last season. Um, hasn't really done a lot of hitting this year, a lot of good hitting things. But he could easily turn around with a good night. Maybe Reed Detmers is the guy. Um, but I wouldn't be surprised if we saw Jonah Heim potentially come in to pinch hit tonight if the game is close. Uh but if we're winning by a lot or losing by a lot, obviously that wouldn't make sense. I just think he has been – he's greatly outperformed his projections. And I think that even when Mitch Garver gets back, you need to find a way to get both of those guys in the lineup. But let me know, what do you guys think of the game so far? Rangers up 1-0 to zero because of the solo blast by Corey Seager. Um, Taylor Hearns looked so-so. Hasn't looked spectacular, but hasn't looked terrible. What's your confidence level in the Rangers winning this game? Rate, put in the comments section down below, 1-10. to 10. Here comes Cole Calhoun, the... Newly acquired free agent in the offseason from the Diamondbacks. But, of course, he played a lot of his career with the Los Angeles Angels. He got off to the year extremely slow, but he's been turning it around. I think for the past week, he's been consistently raking up hits in the um, box score. And Colcahoon hits another ball extremely hard, but flies out too the speedy center fielder, Mike Trout. That actually looked like a solid uh, hit from Calhoun. 
but his baseball savant numbers have started to trend up. And even me myself, I was thinking, do we really um, need Cole Calhoun on the roster? He isn't doing much. You could just call up Leo Di Tavares, but he's been turning it around. It's been good to see. It looks like he's secured a regular day spot in the outfield for the Rangers. Here comes Antia Banyas, who, honestly, if he doesn't play well soon, could easily get replaced by Matt Carpenter, who's playing pretty well in the minors. Maybe Josh Smith. But Antia Banyas did prove that he could play well last season. Obviously, a small sample size. But here comes the 1-1 pitch to Abanez, and he flies out to center fielder Mike Trout as well. Seems like the Angels have shifted these guys pretty well. And now the big power prospect, Sam Huff. In 2020, in the shortened season, Sam Huff hit extremely well for the Rangers. Never got called up last year. Maybe if he plays well, he could find a way to stick at the majors with the Rangers, maybe never go back to the minors. Because if you get Mitch Garver and Jonah Heim starting every single day, you're going to need a backup catcher. Maybe that could be Sam Huff. I really hope he could take advantage of this situation. Obviously, I do get that him being in the minor leagues makes him a starter every day and he can develop more. But even if he's a backup at the majors, that still has to be a decent developmental time. Two balls to Sam Huff. He has the power to hit it out at any single stadium, and you see it right there with that rip. But a foul ball from Huff. He used to be our second prospect in the organization, a top 100 prospect, obviously, because he's a decent defensive catcher, but mainly for that power and his strong arm. The question is, can Sam Huff hold up behind the plate as a catcher, or does he need to move to first base where he actually has gotten some reps in the minor leagues? maybe potentially an outfield situation. But, I mean, hopefully Huff stays at the major leagues because first base might be open. Nate Lowe isn't playing well. And even if you have Mitch Garver and Jonah Heim like, still uh, platoon their days, Sam Huff could get in at first base because, like I said, Nate Lowe hasn't been playing amazing. But he strikes out swinging. He did have a good at bat. Drew a full count, but uh, strike out by Sam Huff, and that is the problem with him. He strikes out a lot. If you have any questions about maybe the Rangers draft, potential free agents for next year, or just about the game, make sure to put it in the comments section down below. Feel free. I'll definitely be happy to answer it during the commercial break. But, I mean, thinking about it now, Sam Huff could potentially stay at the major leagues with the Rangers because he could play first base for us. Um, because Nate Lowe hasn't been playing amazing, like I said. But the thing is, you would need Sam Huff to prove what he can do at the major leagues because um, you can't just leave him and then play garbage. Because obviously Nate Lowe has been a good commodity last year, so he hasn't been playing well now, but he hopefully can do it again. What's up, Nathan Kohler? And if... And also to the other four viewers, I appreciate you watching tonight. Um, Rangers are up 1-0 to zero off of the um, solo blast by Corey Seager. But we're talking about Sam Huff and if he could stay at the major leagues. 
I think it could either be in a DH role, a catcher role, or a first base role because obviously our DH role isn't solidified. It's kind of fluid and always being platooned. But like I said, he needs to hit, and it'd be awesome if he could stay at the major leagues because it doesn't seem like the Rangers always have a bunch of prospects that make an impact for the Rangers at the big league level. The last one I could think about is maybe Leo de Tavares, but he's back in the minors. Um, a lot of the guys we get are traded for or free agents. That's why I was so excited to see Josh Young this year, but he got hurt and we didn't get to see him. I mean, he probably would have been our biggest prospect called up to the majors ever since Joey Gallon. That's crazy to think about. Obviously, you have homegrown talent players like, um, like Abanez, but he's not super exciting. Um, Taylor Hearn, who's pitching right now, he was in the Keone Kella trade. He was the top prospect, but I mean, I think it's different for a guy like Josh Young. All right, a fly ball from Taylor Ward back to the warning track. That ball is gone. Caught in the bullpen by one of the relief pitchers. That was a no-doubter from Hearn. And that's the three hard-hit balls he's already let up tonight. That's the ninth home run from Taylor Ward. Tyler Ward, I don't even know his name, but he's having a good season. 419, 107 off the bat. No-doubter. Taylor Hearn throws a fastball right down the heart of the plate. And most big leaguers should not miss that. And Taylor Ward, who's having a hot season, did not. Hopefully, Hearn doesn't throw two similar pitches to Otani and Trout. Like I said, I'm only doing the first three innings of the game. um, And I'm going to start doing this a little more often. Um, It'll probably look a little more professional the next time I do it. Obviously, this is kind of just trying to get the ball rolling, but yeah. Hearn already down 2-0 to Mike Trout. The home runs have been a problem for Taylor Hearn in the past, and even though Globe Life Field is a big ballpark, you let up a fastball right down the middle of the plate, it's usually going to be out anywhere in the league. From Juan Sereno, keep it up, bro. I'll be back. This is a cool concept. Thank you, Juan. I really appreciate it. Yeah, it probably would make more sense if I did the video live stream on that weekend when probably more people are off. I know today's only a Tuesday, but I was thinking I just need to get the ball rolling, uh, get some content out because I haven't been doing a lot lately. I have... I have been wanting to do these like live streams, but I think I need to get a little bit more of a professional setup next time and then probably do it on the weekends when more people could watch because obviously people are probably studying for finals or they have a day job. So Taylor Hearn down 3-1 to Mike Trout. Hopefully it's not the same pitch. No, Taylor Hearn throws it on the Inside part of the plate, my Trout fouls it off. But honestly, I wonder if you get 3-1 and you're Mike Trout's coaches, do you just say, all right, you got the green light? I would. I mean, nobody's on base, no outs. I would say green light for sure. Even 3-2 even because Taylor Hearn doesn't have the best command. 3-2. Is that a slider off the plate? Foul ball. From Juan Sereno, stream it on as many platforms as you can so people can tune in from everywhere. That's true. So probably Twitch or Instagram Live or Facebook Live. Are those the ones you're thinking about? I mean, that, that would make sense. And Taylor Hearn walks Mike Trout. This isn't a good sign you let up a home run to Taylor Ward. You walk Mike Trout. It honestly draws a sign for a bad inning, but you got the lefty on lefty matchup with Shohei Otani.
And Shohei Otani, we know, does strike out quite a bit. So hopefully the Rangers, I mean, Taylor Hearn can maybe get a double play. That would be really good. Corey Seager has been known to be just an average shortstop at defense. But this year he's actually been playing pretty well. First pitch of foul ball to Shohei Otani. And obviously, Marcus Simeon hasn't been really doing anything great this year. But, I mean, he is a gold glover. So, what I'm getting at is I, we could definitely turn one if um, the ball gets on the ground, even though Shohei Otani is one of the faster guys in the league. And obviously, Shohei Otani does pull the ball. We're shifted. Corey Seager's basically where a second baseman should be, and then Marcus Simeon kind of in the grass. Put another ball from Taylor Hearn. The count is one and one. Uh, Juan Sereno, Facebook, Live, TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, anywhere you can. I wouldn't mind listening to this on a drive. Nice, nice. I'll definitely, yeah, I definitely need to add a few more. I've had f- friends and family say the same thing. Oh, come on. We can't get the high strike from Taylor Hearn. I mean, it probably was a ball, but oh, it's close enough in my opinion. Look at that. Right at the top of the zone, that should be a strike. But obviously, I'm a little biased because I'm a Rangers fan. But getting back to you, Juan, I definitely do need to kind of diversify the platforms because it's not all about YouTube. Ooh, a foul ball from Otani off of Sam Huff. Looks like he's okay. Like I said, I really am surprised Jonah Heim isn't in the lineup tonight. A guy that crushes lefties, going against a lefty. I know he's been taking on a majority of the duties with the Mitch Garver hurt, but still, couldn't you rest him versus a right-handed pitcher? Like, Shoei Otani's pitching tomorrow. You could have rested him against him. And you could have still kind of rested him if you play him as the DH, but no, Nick Solak is the DH for tonight. Taylor Hearn is looking really bad. Walked Mike Trout a full count to Shohei Otani. If Shohei Otani gets on with no outs, this could look pretty ugly. I mean, our long reliever is Brock Burke. He's been really good. But, I mean, if you dig a big hole, it's going to be really difficult to overcome. But I don't want to get too far ahead of myself. As Shohei Otani lines out. Opposite field to Eli White. So that's a good first out. But obviously we still need two more. Maybe a double play. That's what I'd be looking for if I was the Rangers and Taylor Hearn.
My bad. I was muted. Oh, you guys can probably hear me now. But a another foul ball from um, Luis Renjifo. It's one Serena. Do you can you hear me now? I think I was accidentally muted. All right, sweet, sweet. If Taylor Hearn can get an out right here on Luis Renjifo, that'd be big. Because he's probably already has a short leash because the Rangers watch the pitch count really close. But then if he lets another guy on via hit, that could just be kind of detrimental to morale. But if he gets a strikeout here or ground ball or whatever, gets back into the dugout, recuperate. Not the best inning from Taylor Hearn. Let up a solo home run to Taylor Ward. A walk to Mike Trout. And then another home run to Anthony Rendon. Obviously, people have bad outings. The thing with Taylor Hearn, I don't know if he's the type of guy after one bad inning to go a one, two, three. I mean, I, I think we've seen that before with Dane Dunning. He's had some bad innings, like the first inning last year. And he could go one, two, three, one, two, three. But Taylor Hearns seems like the guy, if he's on, he's on. But if he's a little shaky, he doesn't seem like the guy to me that could easily recuperate the next inning and go a quick one, two, three, save you some innings. But that's just me personally. I don't know what the statistics have anything to say on that. But... Charlie Culberson will be starting off the inning for the Texas Rangers. Um, and like I said, this will be the last inning that I'm covering. But if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up down below. And also make sure to subscribe to the channel because those really help out the channel. Um, more than you know, because the YouTube algorithm really likes people liking the video. So if you could do that, I'd greatly appreciate that. Hopefully the Rangers can pick up the win tonight. I wouldn't be surprised if we came back for sure because we actually hit extremely well in our home ballpark. I don't know what it is about pitching um, at home for the Rangers. They just, I mean, hitting at home, they just like hitting. And obviously we know Corey Seager likes hitting at Globe Life Field because of what he's already done so far, but also the 2020 postseason where he won the NLS NLCS MVP award and the World Series uh, MVP. But here we go. Charlie Culberson at the dish facing Reed Detmers takes ball one. I looked at the stats tonight. Um, obviously, Culberson is there for his veteran presence on the club and his defensive versatility, but he's there to crush left-handed pitching. Um, he had a really good season last year of hitting off of lefties. So far, it hasn't been as great. Last year's a 152 weighted runs created plus. Right now, it's 100, so right around a right at league average. But still, that's probably better than Brad Miller. Right, better than uh, Nate Low. Nate Low actually did hit above average versus lefties last year, but um, he hasn't been playing well this year. Culberson gets under the ball way too much and flies out to center fielder Mike Trout for the first out of the inning. So now the lineup flips back over to Eli White. Now, if I wanted to bet, if I was a betting man, I would say Eli White finds a way to get on base right now. He's been playing in the leadoff spot. He's been playing well in the leadoff spot, in my opinion. Kind of surprised that he's in left field versus center field. But maybe Adolis Garcia feels more comfortable in center. I just wonder, obviously I feel like the hitting, I mean the defense and speed is always going to be there for Eli White. But I wonder, is this hitting going to decline at some point? 
He's been a little under average versus right-handed pitchers, but nothing terrible. And then crushing lefties this season. Uh, he has an 11-game on-base streak, but he's already down 0-2. So I'm just curious, do you think that he is going to eventually decline? Uh, I don't know. I hope not. And Eli White strikes out, looking at the third strike. Um, Demers only has 35 pitches on the outing. That's half of what uh, Taylor Hearn has. Kind of impressive. Besides that home run to Corey Seager, he's actually looked pretty dominant. I know that he had a no-hitter um, last outing, but I know you got to take no-hitters with a grain of salt. That doesn't always mean that those guys are going to be competing for Cy Youngs, but what I've seen from Detmer so far is pretty good. Throws a first-strike pitch to Marcus Simeon. I knew he was a first-round pick, but obviously first-rounders don't always pan out. But first impressions, I, I like what he has so far. Ball to Marcus Simeon. Apparently, <laughs> on the graphic, it says Marcus Simeon has a 375 on base in the last two games. That really means nothing at all. Marcus Simeon gets under it way too much, launching it way too high, and he flies out to left fielder Brandon Marsh. So that ends it for here. I really appreciate everybody that um clicked on the video to watch the live stream like i said i do plan to do more of these in the future probably on the weekends so you never know maybe another one uh coming this week um but the rangers down three to one i do think the rangers can come back because our offense is just better at home i think taylor Hearn probably gets taken out of the game maybe after the fourth inning he may not even get through the fourth inning um if you liked the video, please give a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel because I'm your number one source for all things Texas, Texas Rangers related. But if you have any comments or questions, make sure to put it down in the comment section down below in the live chat. I'll stay down for about another minute to answer some questions. But hopefully the Rangers pick up the dub. Big series of versus the Angels. And if we win tonight, we win the series. We've actually been playing pretty decent in May. I think we're 8-5. and five. From Juan Sereno. Are you only going to cover the Rangers team or other ones as well? I thought you were an Angel fan. Man, come on. <laughs> no, I'm actually – I'm just – I'm a Rangers fan, so sorry to say that I won't be covering uh, other teams. But I do appreciate um, everybody that has watched so far. I think there are some channels that cover the Angels, but I don't know if they go super in-depth. But if there isn't any more comments, um, I appreciate everybody who's watched the live stream. That being said, I'll see you on the next one. Peace.